Hi, it's Marcus. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief rundown for how you should prepare for the section 3 component of the BMAT, the essay, using ideas from when I did the essay and achieved the 4A alongside my 7.1 and 6.3 in sections 1 and 2 respectively, helping me secure a spot at the University of Cambridge. If you haven't already, go watch my video on how to write a great BMAT essay as this will give you the rundown for exactly what you should write in each paragraph, as well as many tips that hopefully will help you write a really good essay. The first step is to look through a load of different essay questions. Just sort of read through them and get an inkling for more or less what the kind of questions that come up are, as well as how prepared you would feel if you were to attempt the BMAT essay right now. Don't worry, it's totally normal if you have no idea how on earth you would approach these. Again, go watch my video on how to write a BMAT essay because that should really help you if you do feel like this. Step two is to write out a couple of full essays. Practice actually writing out the different parts, the introduction, the paragraphs, the conclusion, all of the arguments you make and the evidence you bring in and bring everything together into an actual well-formed essay. Take as long as you want, plan for as long as you want and potentially look up pieces of evidence if you need to. Consider the format that you're gonna write the essay. Are you gonna type it? or handwrite it. These have very different word counts, so make sure to cater to that. If you're handwriting it, then this will really limit the amount that you can write for each paragraph. I'd recommend to try and get these essays marked, whether this be by a teacher at school, or by a tutor online, or even by a friend of yours. This is to give you an idea of where you're at, more or less. Once you're comfortable with writing all of the different components of the essay and actually approaching the arguments and the evidence sections, then what you want to do is to be able to approach a variety of different essay questions so that when you're in the exam, you're not stuck without anything to write about. Therefore, you need to do a load of directed practice so that when you do reach the exam, you're not taken off guard. Therefore, step three, and in my opinion, the most important step is to do loads of essay plans. I know that for my BMAT essay, I did an additional 10 essay plans or something the night before, taking five to 10 minutes per plan and really just cranking them out one after the other. I obviously wouldn't suggest doing them the night before and give yourself a lot more time to prepare and space to improve. However, the idea remains the same. Doing these essay plans is really useful for getting you into the flow of generating ideas and arguments as well as structuring the actual essay so that you're familiar with all essay question types. I'd suggest going through the years and trying to write two plans out of the three for each year. This is to really cover your bases so that you don't only practice one question type which is repeated every year because if you then don't like this question in the exam, you're screwed. So you might be asking me, okay, cool, I'll write a bunch of essay plans, but how do I make a good plan in five minutes? Well, I would suggest writing out at least your introduction and your conclusion out totally. These are often really hard to write, and therefore if you practice actually writing them out in full, then you'll avoid taking any shortcuts and therefore avoid any shortcomings for the hardest part of the essay. Then, for each of the two paragraphs, your argument and your counter argument, write down a small sentence for your main idea, so your proposition, and then one or two bullet points below it outlining the evidence that supports that proposition. Do this for both paragraphs. These are the essentials that you need to put into an essay plan. And if you then just flesh out each paragraph and add a couple of linkers, then you basically have the whole essay written at a standard that's enough to get you into university. So I would suggest practicing these until you are confident that you would be able to write an introduction, two paragraphs with evidence and a conclusion for any question that they could throw at you. This will guarantee you a pass mark. So step four in preparing for the BMAT essay ensures that you always have something to support your arguments. I'd recommend having a small database basically in your mind of 20 to 30 pieces of evidence that you can just slot into your essays. This shouldn't require much, if any, extra reading. And you can reuse books that you have used for your personal statement, things that you have learned in school, as well as anything else that you have absorbed over the years in terms of science or medicine as evidence that you can use to support your arguments. You will get more and more used to slotting these pieces of evidence into your essays with the more essay plans that you do, so make sure to really practice these. These four steps are all you need to prepare for the BMAT essay to a decent level. However, keep on listening if you want to prepare further and really go for those high marks, the fours and the fives. Step five would be, if you want, to practice a couple of essays timed and in exam conditions. The timing for the essay is really quite fine, but getting used to the formats and the paper of the essay can be a bit fiddly. So if you are handwriting, then print out the actual essay paper which they use and practice writing on this as it can be quite helpful to get a feel for it so there aren't any surprises in the real exam. 
Step six is if you still have time, read through a load of essay titles and take two minutes to quickly think of your interpretation of the question, an argument, a counter argument, and the evidence supporting each of these. If you are capable of thinking of all of these things at this speed, this is the best preparation you can do. So don't bother writing any more full essays. This won't benefit you quite as much. If you want to prepare fully and totally for the essay and you really want to get a great score, which I don't see much point in doing by the way, do some extra reading. If you are interested in ethics, you may want to read up on the theories of medical ethics, as well as the philosophers behind these, such as Kant and Hippocrates, or the four pillars of medical ethics. If you are interested in theories of knowledge and ideas such as vitalism and the origin of being, then a good place to start would be with philosophy of science, and philosophers such as Aristotle, Socrates, or Plato would be great to read up on. If you are interested in more the medical scenario type of question, then look up specific examples that support or go against the four pillars of medical ethics. And look at real life debates that have happened in recent years. These are great real examples for evidence that you can just slot into essays, and they are incredibly effective in supporting your arguments, not to mention examiners really love it when you do this. I'd suggest, if you have time, tailoring this reading to whatever it is you want to do in the exam. You can't read up on everything, there's too much to read about, and you'll spread yourself too thin. Okay, so I hope this video has helped, and if you have questions about any of this or anything about application or admissions processes, then feel free to drop a comment in the section below. I always try to reply to every comment. If you want to watch any other of my BMAP videos, then click here or here. I'm sure YouTube will recommend something great. And if you're interested in whatever I post in the future, then it'd be great if you subscribed. That way you can be the first to know when I post something. I'll see you in the next one.